Uh, people are going to hate this video. I am dreading all the old and loving or old and hating trolls in the comments carrying on like a pork chop. But bugger it, like the great Karl Murawski says. <laughs> Troll me and be prepared to be trolled back. So here we go. G'day and welcome back to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajit people. This is a different video and those of you who want a, a straight boot review about the Alden 405, you can go see this review up here of the Alden 403. It's actually much the same except that the 405 is in this famous pumpkin coloured calfskin whereas the uh, 403 is in brown chrome excel. But what's in this video? I will first give you a quick rundown of the 405, but I won't give you a brand history like I normally do because those who watch this video will probably know all about Alden. I won't dive into the construction either, which you can see in my other 403 review, so I, I won't really talk about the pui pui spit leatherboard used. <laughs> But what I will spend a lot of time on is how these boots might have been costed and how that costing could be compared to Grant Stone boots or Gucci's US $990 sneaker. For those of you not interested in the numbers, I'll tell you when to switch off and come back tomorrow for another review video. So this is the Alden 405 Indie boot from Alden of New England. They've been making this boot since I think the 1960s. Now obviously in those days, it wasn't known as the Indie Boot, uh, just the Model 405 Work Boot. Yes, famously, this was a work boot and famously worn by Harrison Ford while he was working as a carpenter before he broke into movies like American Graffiti, Star Wars, and of course, Raiders of the Lost Ark. For those of you who don't believe this was a work boot, you're too young. <laughs> I grew up in the 60s and 70s and in those days, people didn't wear round toe, chunky work boots to do light manual labour or even, you know, moderately heavy manual labour. You might think the Iron Ranger looks like a work boot, unlike these, but even they were sold as work and after work shoes. You just give them a brush and you go out. All boots looked the same in those days because fashion and dress sense was just a lot more formal. The advantage of the 405 as a work boot includes the flat nitrile cork sole. For a carpenter maybe working outside to trim timber and then bringing it inside to fix and finish, this didn't drag in dirt into the customer's house. Also, as a brand with a history in orthopedic shoes, this is famously comfortable with the True Balance Last, the cantilever arch support and the Thomas heel. So carpenters standing all day good shoes. In many ways, this is one of the last truly innovative boot designs. Today, mock toes look alike, uh, service boots look alike, work boots look alike, bar a few, you know, trims and leather patches here and there. But imagine back then designing a boot that looked like a dress shoe and then stitching on this mock toe stitch purely as a decoration. The difference between this 405 and the 403 in my other video is that this is made from what they call calf skin, except it's actually Horween's Austin leather. And this is the one that uh, Indy actually wore in the movies. This particular pair is a previously owned Indy 405, which I got from my mate uh, Ellie, who's on Instagram as the Heritage Tribute. Man, he really looks after his boots. Go check out his account on Instagram. I'll leave a link to his Instagram account in the description below. Now, I am not linking a website to Alden uh, because quite frankly, it's a, it's a pretty boring website. If you want to see the different models that Alden offers, even in the 405, it's better for you to just Google Alden and then browse through their partner retail stores like uh, Alden Madison, Eldwine Rally, and the Alden Shop, but more of those later. Okay, now that's almost all I want to say about the Olden Indy 405. What I'm going to do now is to take a detailed deep dive 
into how bootmakers price their products. My deep dive is going to be numbers based, but don't worry, <laughs> I will give it to you in a way that you will understand. You know, lots of pictures and charts will be accompanying. Uh, you won't go blind, <laughs> but it will make for a long, but I still hope still fascinating video. I'm going to compare Alden's business model against Grant Stone's as an example of a good quality direct-to-consumer brand made in China. And I'm also going to take a look at how Gucci could possibly price a sneaker at US $990. Now, there is a, a, a lot of information, misinformation, around the thinking that, hey, they use cheap materials, so the cost of their boots should be a lot lower. Oh man, they're ripping us off. Well, Cost breakdown is a lot more complicated than just the cost of materials. So I wanted to break down the cost of these three examples, the Indy, Grant Stone, and Gucci. They sell for approximately 700, 400, and 1,000 US dollars respectively. If you're not interested in that, now is the time to go and watch cartoons or something. But if you're still here, let me make a few points about the context before I start. First, I am an experienced management consultant who trained as a chartered accountant 45 years ago, worked on four continents in the last 45 years, and with extensive experience in my early days of cost accounting. Now, that's a, a special branch of bean counting that looks at how manufactured products are costed. I tell you this not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I know numbers. Second, I am not speaking for Alden, and I'm not dissing anyone. This is a numbers game that I'm going to try to explain. I am not paid to defend anyone or drum up sales for anyone else, or criticize any other YouTubers who have you know, one opinion or another. Hear me now. Third, I have some caveats. I do not have first-hand information from the factories, so the numbers I use will be estimates. Now, I believe they're good estimates, inferred from uh, industry averages and publicly available information. I am treating this exercise like how I would research a hostile takeover of a company, including using industry statistics and known costings and company research databases like Dun & Bradstreet. I am also assuming uh, these three brands follow industry averages, but as we all know, averages are only averages from a bunch of people not a specific company's exact numbers. And finally, this is not going to be qualitative. I won't be talking about the great comfort of these or how Alden is over 100 years old or how some materials have better performance qualities in certain use cases. This is going to be dispassionately quantitative. With those caveats in mind, let's start. Let's start with some industry information available from various sources like the bureaus of statistics, uh, industry associations, and surveys across the world. This is how the selling price of an average shoe is broken down into parts. Factory manufacturing direct cost represents about 23% of the price. Getting it to you, the cost of freight, insurance, duties, and taxes make up about 5% of the price. The brand margin, what the brand keeps, is about 22% of the price, uh, but this is not all the brand's profit. From this brand margin, the brand has to pay the company overheads like selling expenses and sales force salaries, marketing and admin costs, uh, their non-factory workforce, secretaries, marketing people and consultants, accountants and so on, as well as rents, property taxes, all the things that you have to pay as a business that is not already included in the factory manufacturing cost. You'll see from my discussion later that some companies might end up with a brand net profit from this brand margin that's either higher or lower than the others. Finally, the price includes a retailer's margin of 45 to 50%. This is the margin that brands will allow their retailer to make in order to make up the selling price at the shop front. Now, this might sound a lot to you for every $100 in the price, the retailer makes $50? But no, because this also allows the retailer to pay their costs, rent on the store, um, you know, expert salespeople's wages who fit you when you walk in, store decorations, furniture fittings, uh, power, lighting, 
their own uh, administration costs, their business bookkeeper, uh, uh, external tax accounts, all that sort of stuff. What's left is the retailer's profit. But think, if the shoes are sold in an expensive suburb or street, that retailer profit is getting cut down. More of this later. If you still think that's too much and you've never been in business, let me ask you this. You are going to start a business that will need you to invest tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of your own money or money borrowed from the bank, secured probably on your own home, in order to rent a store, fit it out, buy stock, pay some early salaries, or before you make your first sale. What kind of return do you want from your investment to even take that risk when you can put your money in the bank and get a decent 5% interest? What kind of a return do you want in order to even accept ongoing business risk like COVID shutting you down for weeks or, you know, a slow week or um, maybe the weather making people buy flip-flops and not boots? Think about it. So that's our start, the percentages of what makes up the price of a pair of boots. Let's start putting the percentages into dollar terms. Let's uh, start with Alden. My friend Dale from Dale's Leatherworks, a leather worker himself, estimates for me that the amount of leather to make a pair of the uppers, including the lining, will be about $30 to $40, assuming Alden's buying power getting good prices. My cobbler tells me that he can buy a neoprene cork sole for under $10 US. I'll take a guess that the welt and so on, including the cheap, yuck, split, split, pull, leatherboard insole, <laughs> totals about $5 all up. I'm staying in US dollars, by the way. So let's say the materials alone cost about $50 generously. Now, in a factory, the factory direct cost, the 23% of the total price, isn't just made up of materials. The factory has to pay salaries, the wear and tear of machinery, power, lighting, water, property costs, property taxes, and so on. Another industry source cites that uh, factory overheads in footwear in the US is about $100 per shoe, uh, or per pair of shoes. They don't actually have a separate calculation for boots, but let's go with that. So factory overheads plus materials is about $150 per pair. If that represents 23%, then the freight and insurance and duties of 5% will be $43. So the cost to clear the factory, or what's called FOB, free on board, is $193. In this picture, I'm rounding to the nearest 50 bucks. If the factory cost free on board is $193, which represents 28% of selling price and an average brand margin is 22% of selling price, that converts to a brand margin of $151. From that, they pay their admin and sales and office overheads and what's left after those overheads will be their net profit. Now, I don't know what portion of the 151 that is, but they end up with a portion of that 22% margin. Now, $151 per pair sounds like a gouge, and I'm not being an old an apologist, but wait. Remember, out of this, they have to pay for the management and the board of directors if they're a big company, which Alden is, they have to pay for the office premises, rents, power, infrastructure, furniture. Uh, they have to pay the salesmen who go around to all the independent Alden stores, you know, like Grant Stone's Wyatt Gilmore's grandfather. They have to pay for all the account staff, the office workers, the secretaries that a big company tends to accumulate. They have to pay taxes and filing charges and external audit fees and so on. The industry average says that a brand's net profit is about 13% of the total price. Now, I repeat, I don't know if Alden gets this net profit, but if they're like the industry average, then the net profit they keep per pair is about $20. Okay, your brain starts to say, whoa, that sounds way too low. It sounds like they have to sell a hell of a lot of pairs to make any real money, right? Research company Grojo estimates that in 2022, Alden's gross turnover was $75 million. Assuming their boots and shoes average a sales price of $800 a pair at the store, then Alden's uh, sales is about $400 or 50% of the selling price. Remembering 50% goes to the retailer. 
which means that they sold about 187,500 pairs in 2022. Now, if they make a net profit of $20 per pair, then, after all overheads and taxes, they kept $3.75 million in net profit in their pockets. Now, that's a net profit of 5% of sales, which to me as an accountant is sounding realistic in a post-COVID business. Okay, so next. Alden uses a partner store model. This means that they sell to their partner stores like L1, Raleigh, uh, Alden Medicine, and so on. Uh, not being company stores, these guys need to make their own profits, right? Alden sells to these stores at, estimates now, $193 uh, factory cost FOB plus brand margin $151, adding up to a price to retailers of $344 a pair. If the retailer margin, as we saw earlier, averages at 50% of the selling price, then the partner stores add $344 for their cut, making the total estimated selling price $688. We know that Alden Indies sell for around $700, so purely using industry averages, I've come pretty close. Okay now, let's quickly compare Grant Stone. Let's say Grant Stone's materials are the same, I mean leather from Horween as well after all and they probably don't have Alden's volume and buying power. And don't forget they use leather installs instead of the ugh, yuck, pui, pui, split leather board. <laughs> so let me guess the materials are $60, $10 more than Alden. Factory costs in China are lower, lower factory wages, lower rents and so on. Now US trade figures show that manufacturing costs are about 20% less in China than in the US. So if factory costs and overheads for Alden are $100, as we estimated earlier, then on average, Grant Stone should be about $80 per pair. But their freight, insurance and duties will be higher than Alden's. I mean, they have to ship materials from the US and Europe to China first, and then they have to ship finished product back to the US warehouse, and then they have to ship it out to you. So let's say it's $55 instead of Alden's $43 a pair. Add it all up and Grant Stone's estimated factory direct cost FOB is $195. If we compare the factory FOB cost per boot, we can see from this graph that it's not very different. I think this is sensible, you know, because despite the cheaper manufacturing cost of Grant Stone, they use the same materials, uh, maybe even better. They may not get the same volume prices as Alden when they buy those materials, and they have to pay more in freight and so on. Now, but from here on, the comparison starts to get tricky because Grant Stone uses the direct-to-consumer model selling directly off their website. The most obvious difference is they don't have to give a retailer the ability to add double the factory FOB cost for their retailer margin. On the other hand, Grant Stone has, I believe, higher marketing costs. I mean, take a look at Alden's website. It is rudimentary to say the least. But then take a look at the websites of their retailers. That's how they sell, through the retailers. So it's forgivable if Grant Stone adds a little margin from the savings to fund their marketing, you know, paying influencers, social media ads, social media photographs, and so on. Uh, and then on the other hand also, Grant Stone's brand margin overheads, you know, head office costs, secretaries and boards, are a lot less. They have a warehouse in Michigan, uh, which I'm guessing has a very slim back of house staff, maybe just Wyatt and Josh and probably the families and some warehousing staff. So, I don't know, for the sake of argument, let's say that they add a combined brand and retailer margin of 50% of the selling price. So factory FOB of $195 plus the combined margin of $195 makes a selling price of $390. Woohoo! <laughs> My estimates are almost bang on the money again. <laughs> now, let's take a look at Gucci's $1,000 sneaker. These sell for $990. Are they a ripoff? Materials, definitely cheaper stuff, cheaper leather and rubber soles. Overall, let's take a guess at $30. Factory, the sneakers are apparently made in Italy, so not super cheap but I guess you have to say reasonably similar to manufacturing in the US. So, say, $150 a pair. Freight, insurance and duties. Now, 
This might be where it starts to take off because they are a global company with sales of $9.9 billion a year. So shipping all over the world must cost a fair bit. Let's double Alden's freight insurance and duties cost from $43 to $86. But wait, we still have to add their brand margin. This is where it gets expensive. They are a huge organization. Their brand overheads are not just an office in New England. They'll have offices all over the world and befitting a luxury brand, you'd better believe the offices are in major expensive neighborhoods and they will be fitted out like a minor European palace. Their overheads are not just a worldwide sales force and all the usual administrative back office people, you know. You have to multiply all of that around the world with oh, football teams of lawyers and accountants backing them up. They'll also have their own in-house marketing and design team, uh, a group of people specifically cooking up new season designs every day for each new season. Marketing? They pay sports stars and supermodels for their campaigns. Add to that the desired net profit target that they want to make in order to defray their huge worldwide risk of being in business. Say, a total brand margin of $200 a pair, including a hefty portion of that as their net profit. Total estimate now? So be aware, it's an educated guess. So let's put together my guess of how the Gucci selling price is made up. Factory direct cost uh, FOB, $266 plus a brand margin of $200 means that they sell to retail stores at $466 a pair, including, let me repeat, a big net profit to head office included in their brand margin. Not all their retailers are independent. Many are owned by Gucci. But big businesses treat their stores as separate operations from manufacturing, so I'm going to say that they add the usual retailer's margin, so double up at $466. That means they end up at a selling price of $932. Again, pretty damn close, so I'm saying that my guesstimates are pretty near true. So now, let's compare selling prices uh, and, and uh, how they might have been made up for each of the brands. So this chart shows the Alden selling price on the left, Grant Stone in the middle, and Gucci on the right. That's about $700, just under $400, and nearly $1,000 respectively. The blue bar at the very bottom of uh, each stack is the cost of materials, a very small part of the selling price. The orange bar is the direct cost of manufacturing. The grey is freight insurance and duties. The yellow is the brand margin, and the brands will make their own profit from a portion of that. The light blue on top, not shown for Grant Stone, is the cut that uh, brands are allowing for retail stores to take and to pay their own expenses and make up uh, their own net profits. Now, I am not saying one is right and another is wrong, uh, that one is price gouging and another is not. You can play this video again. I came to this chart from methodically picking out every element of their cost. The brand's actual profit, which they keep in their pockets after paying all expenses and taxes, is a portion, just a portion, of that yellow bar in the middle. What I am saying is that, and you can see from this, the cost of materials is a tiny portion of what makes up a selling price. As a management consultant, let's say that Alden hires me to advise them how to make a $400 pair of Indies. Here's what I'd tell them. Number one, close the factory in New England. It is cheaper to manufacture in Mexico. Move to a subcontracted factory in Mexico where you can negotiate a price because of your volumes and your buying power. Number two, stop selling to your retail partners. Adopt the direct-to-consumer model and sell directly from your website. Now sure, you are going to have to increase your marketing and website costs, probably by quite a lot, but you will immediately cut your selling price by at least 50% because you don't have to allow retailers to add their costs to the price. Number three, close down your corporate offices and run lean and mean. Operate out of smaller, less bloated offices and slimmer management structures. Sack all your managers, salesmen, secretaries, support staff, and save a ton in salaries. That's how you make a $400 indie. 
Now, I'm not an American and I am a cold-blooded bean counter, but you can think of the cost yourselves. I don't know how many jobs are going to be lost, factory jobs, office jobs, managers and salesmen. You also probably lose jobs in their town that support the company. Uh, all the shops and stores that their employees buy from, you know, uh, food, clothing, all of that sort of stuff. How many retail partners are going to close down? Most of them I see sell mainly or only Alden shoes. So small American businesses like Alden Madison, the Alden Shop, Alden of San Diego, Alden of Carmel, all of these will have to close or drastically change with I don't know how many more jobs lost. Oh, and by the way, Alden, founded in 1884, and I think one of the, uh, I think one of the few remaining bootmakers in New England left from a, a plethora of brands, well, made in Mexico. Business is hard, people. It's not just the cost of materials. At any rate, that is my management consultant's take on boot pricing. As I've said, I'm not putting any brand down or I'm not supporting Alden. I'm simply showing you an exercise that is based on facts and industry statistics. And hey, the proof was in the pudding. All my from the ground up estimates came pretty close to the actual selling prices. Anyway, I hope you like this different video. You know what to do. Hopefully, you will like and subscribe. Now next week, we're back into an actual boot review. <laughs> Stay tuned. Until then, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon.